I can go into my customized reports and possibly I can have someone else do this because it should be a pretty standardized process, meaning I can give it to a staff member or something and just say, I would like to print these reports, change the date range to whatever the relevant date range is, save it as a PDF or print it as a bundle. So let's look at those options. I'm gonna go into the summary report. Actually, let's do it this way. I'll go back and I'm gonna right click and open it in a new uh, tab. So does it let me do that? Right click and I'm gonna say open in a new tab. It's not giving me that option. That's weird. I, the other reports usually do. Anyways, I'll click on it. And then we can just change the name up top or the dates and the name should be should be good. So then our options are to email it, but then you typically have to send one at a time. We can print it, which would be useful if you're going to be handing it to somebody. But sometimes that's not the case. Oftentimes we're going to have to email it or put it on a cloud drive, which means we want to export it to a PDF generally. And we'll talk about exporting to Excel later which could be a nice option for us to then use Excel to create all the reports on one PDF file. So I'm gonna to export to a PDF. This is the format that it looks like. So most of the time we're good on the, on the default formatting. Notice you have a couple options to the right. Portrait landscape, uh, smart page fits, helps it to fit you know, on one page, meaning we don't want two pages wide typically. And then repeat the page header. Here's the header up top. If, if you have two pages and you don't want the header on there, you can remove the repeat page header. So that's, those are some nice options here, but it's still quite limited. Uh, if you get to a longer reports that are quite wide in nature and you're to force it to fit on one page wide, for example, then it can change the, the size of the font, which will be different than the other size of the fonts or the other reports. And so in those cases, sometimes it's useful to export it to Excel where you have further formatting options there. Uh, and once again, here we can email, we could save as a PDF, we can print it. I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a PDF. So there it is. I'm gonna pull this to the right and then grab my folder. So I've got a folder here that's gonna say QuickBooks Online. In, in practice, you might call it your client folder. I'm gonna call it a test drive because this is, that's what I'm naming the first half of the course where you might put it as clients, for example. You might have another folder that would be broken out by date, which would be quite common, maybe by year, for example, and then have your reports in there each year. Uh, and then I'm gonna go into my reports and I'm just gonna drag this one into my reports. There it is. So notice that it gives us the name with no, with no uh, spaces. So that's usually pretty good. It doesn't, it didn't put the number one on it. So I'm gonna try to number my reports in here because when I send them out, I would like to give an idea of which reports I think the client should open first. Okay, let's do it again. I'm gonna pull this back on over. I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna try to go back to to my reports so that gets us back into my my custom reports here and then i'll do the same thing for the for the second one the balance sheet and there it is so i call balance sheet by quarter i'm going to go ahead and uh, export this to a pdf boom I'll, it looks like it's fitting on one page because it's got the smart fit so i'll go ahead and notice there's the title repeating so if you didn't want the title to repeat you can take that one off and that'll not have the title repeating. So either way could, you know, you might like either format, but I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a PDF. It's gonna open up down here because I'm in Google Chrome. Note that if you're in another browser, Firefox or Explorer or whatever, it's gonna show up. However, the forms show up in those browsers, possibly with an arrow up top in, in uh, Firefox, for example, or something right click and i'm going to edit and put a two in front of this one and then i'll go back on over we'll do it two more times dos vases moss and then we're going to say number three open that up and let's go ahead and export that to uh, a pdf and it fits on one page because we got the smart fit so that looks good. Mui B to the end. Let's save it and go pull that on over. Boom. I'm going to right click, rename it, rename number three. 
Oh, wait a second. So I'm gonna don't name that way. Do it again. Don't delete it. Just put a three in front of it. That's what I'm trying to do. You know what I was trying to do. You just made it, messed it up on purpose. So I'm gonna go back on over and say this is number four, last one. And let's go ahead and download the PDF, save it as. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that one over. The final, it's the final countdown. Number, number four. I don't know why I have that song in my head. I think I heard that song. There's a final countdown song. So, so there they are. So now, once you have them here, you can add these one by one to an email attachment, but four and four connect four attachments isn't too bad, but we're going to be adding other reports to this as well, such as income statement reports. So it would probably be better if you can give it to them possibly in a cloud drive format, like uh, a, a Google drive or, or Microsoft OneDrive or whatever, uh, or our Dropbox, right? Uh, or you can zip it and give it in an attachment in an email, which I think would be a little bit nicer, which I can do by adding another folder. And I'm going to call these reports, reports. And let's say these are as of 12.31.22. Uh, and then I'll put these reports in it, grabbing them, dragging them in to the folder. And then I can right click on the folder and I can zip it. I can say zip it just like I told my my dog when it was barking zip it compress what well, says compress now compress it so there it is so you might not have the same compression you might have like a folder with a zipper on it or something like that but the point is that you can now attach this file directly to an email so instead of having multiple attachments that they would have to open one by one you've got the one file and I and I think it's kind of nice if you're going to give it in this in this way, in this format, to then have the numbers as well. Meaning now you've got the numbered files so they can open it and you have some indication on how they, you know, what order they should open them. Okay, so th that's th those are the formats we can provide the, the files. 